Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, hope you're doing well. So today I have a not so fun uh, thing to address with you, but it's very important. That's why I wanted to record the video. It's a little bit of a rant, really, uh, and I, I don't know why I feel this way now because I've been doing this for over 20 years, talking about hair transplantation, dedicating exclusively to it for the last 22 years. I've been uh, a physician for about 26 years now, so since I graduated medical school and went through residencies and everything like that, so uh, I've been doing this for a while now. Um, and we've always seen in the past and more recently, uh, more and more recently, uh, people that come into the field of hair restoration surgery and start treating patients and uh, give them not so good advice or perform procedures that are not really uh, correct or advisable and I've been here in the channel talking about that before uh, we talked about the import importance of uh, a doctor's training in hair restoration surgery why just can't everybody anybody just do hair there's a link to a video that we recorded right here for you if you want to see it um, the importance also of, of being a board certified in hair restoration surgery there's another video that we recorded the link is gonna be right here for you if you want to check it out all these things are important and more and more now hair restoration surgery is becoming more popular. Unfortunately though, we still have people out there um, and, I, I, and I'm talking about sometimes colleagues of mine that just don't bother to learn about this enough and, and they are actually hurting patients and that's where it hurts me so bad and that's why the reason for this video. So if you're listening to this, I hope this will help you in your decision process. I know from talking to patients every day about their hair loss that some of you, if not most, go through a few consultations with different people before you decide. And that's what you should do, you know, nothing wrong with that. But uh, hopefully after this talk you will get away from it a little bit better prepared. And I'm actually going to include uh, a little checklist at, the, at this video here, you can download it if you want to, that you should take to your consultation and make sure that whoever is seeing you uh, is, checks all the boxes and that uh, you get all the information that you need to get during that consultation. Hair loss is not just a, a simple thing. In fact, hair has a lot to do with the person's general health, has to do a lot of with the, what kind of medications they take, what kind of health problems they have. So during a, a consultation, uh, all these things should be addressed. If not, you didn't have a good consultation. I see time and time again patients coming in to me that went other places and number one, they didn't, never saw the doctor, they saw somebody else, maybe a salesperson or a consultant, I don't know, never saw the doctor, uh, got recommendations for treatment for the condition that was not correct because the condition that they had, the actual type of hair loss was not diagnosed properly, uh, had procedures that didn't work well or produced terrible results because they didn't have the type of hair loss that required surgery anyway. And also, as bad as it goes, they never were counseled on how to treat their hair loss for the future. So I've seen patients that were that had a hair transplant in their 20s and they were never told that they needed to take medications or they should protect their the rest of their hair against loss. And now they're in their 30s or 40s and they lost everything else. The transplants are now not looking natural and they have no hair to move or anymore. So, this really pisses me off and uh, there's no other softer way of saying this. So if you're listening to this, stick out to the end, get all the information you need. It's, it's for your own well-being and for your own good, okay? So what is important in a consultation? A medical consultation involves a few steps. Whether you go for diabetes, for high blood pressure, for thyroid disease, for whatever. Hair loss is a medical condition. It may not be considered a disease, Although many of them are, the only one that's not considered a disease is the genetic hair loss or androgenetic alopecia as it's, it's known, which is the most common one. But there are many other types of hair loss that are medical conditions, that are diseases, whether diseases of the hair and the scalp. And they show up. You may have it, you just don't know. If you go with someone that doesn't take the steps and doesn't understand hair loss, they're gonna miss it as well. And so, Go, you need to go with someone that has specialized in hair loss because we're gonna take the time to tell you about these things. I'm gonna take the time to tell you. My consultations are free, but they're about usually 
a good hour or so because I need to get all the information from you to get, give you the best advice and best recommendation. So here's what you need to look for. A doctor or whoever is seeing you for the consultation should ask you for, about your hair loss history. Why is that important? When you started losing your hair, how was the hair loss, how much is progressing, which area is it affecting, everything like that is very important information and it should be asked about. Your family history of hair loss. Your father, your brothers, your uncles, your grandpa, parents, do they have hair losses? If so, what kind of hair loss? The women in your family, did they have hair loss if you're a lady? What kind of hair loss do they have? When did it start? How did it progress? Those things are important because you're starting to put together the, the pieces of the puzzle so that your physician, your doctor, your provider can actually make a sense of what they're telling you. If they're not asking these questions and you don't know to volunteer them to them, uh, the information to them, they're not going to give you the accurate diagnosis. Your medical history. The, by that I mean, are you diabetic? Do you have uh, heart trouble? Do you have thyroid disease? Uh, if you're a lady, are your menstrual periods regular? Are they irregular? Uh, do you have pain when you have menstrual periods? Do you have hair in your body that's abnormal, either more or less? All these things are important because if, if the doctor or the provider doesn't ask you these things, they're not gonna get the, the full picture and those are important because they will help us see what kind of hair loss you have, how, if any of these things are influencing your hair, because if you don't treat that source of the problem, you're not gonna get the best result of the new treatment. Your past and current medications. We know that some medications can cause hair loss. If I don't ask you about that, then of course you won't know to tell me if I don't ask you, because if I don't ask you, you assume it's not important, right? Well, it is, because if you're taking medication that can cause your hair loss, and if I don't ask about that, I won't know I won't be able to tell you that, and maybe we can look for an alternative. Maybe we can't, but at least we know that that's influencing your hair. Your allergy history. Why is that important? Well, if I write a prescription for something, uh, I need to know if you can be allergic to it. Most things that we prescribe are okay, but if I don't know, if I mean, people have obscure allergies. If I recommend a transplant for you, a procedure, for example, and you come in and we do it, if I don't know that you're allergic to an antibiotic, for example, or if you had a reaction to an anesthetic before, how would I take care of that? How would I prevent it or modify it for your safety? So those are important questions. Your surgical history. Have you had any procedures before? Not just hair transplants, okay? Anything, facelifts, breast augmentation, hernia surgery, gallbladder surgery, whatever, anything, right? If you had your, if you're a lady, you had your ovaries taken out. If you're a guy, if you had your prostate removed, from cancer or from anything. Those are important questions. Why? Because they tell me about a medical condition that you may have had, may have been fixed, that's fine. Also, it'll tell me if you have any complications. That's my next question to a patient. Have you ever had any complications from surgery? Oh yeah, one time I had anesthesia and I and I almost passed away. You know, I, they had to resuscitate me. Or I had surgery and I had terrible bleeding. So this is important information for me as a surgeon because it's going to help you plan your procedure better. So again, important questions that if you don't know that are important and I don't ask you, you're not going to volunteer the information to me. With all that in place, right, I usually try to create a timeline. So okay, so by what you're telling me in summary, you started losing your hair when you were 18, 19, that's when you first noticed. Then. You know, by the time you were 20, uh, you had your baby, and then after the baby, the hair loss got worse, and then it got better. So I try to frame it in a timeline, and I try to associate that timeline, the various stages of hair loss, with things that are important for the hair loss. So your hair loss has been worse in the last five years. Well, you had your thyroid disease for the last maybe six or seven years, so was that a factor on your hair loss? Did you start taking this birth control pill or a medication for your blood pressure that can cause hair loss prior to that period? Could that have accelerated your hair loss? See, in my mind, I'm thinking all these things and trying to connect the dot. That's what we do as physicians, not just for hair loss, for everything. So before I am a hair transplant specialist or a hair loss specialist, I'm a physician too. I have to understand how your body works, how your heart works, how your thyroid gland works, how your 
hormones work, your testosterone, your female hormones, and how that impacts your hair loss. If I don't know that, I can't connect the dots. And unfortunately, from what I've seen, many people out there either don't know or they forgot their medical school things. And they're not serving you as best as they could. And that's wrong, you know? So just be careful. Then I review what your goals for your hair. I have had patients that had to me, they were completely bald and they said, look, I don't care about this. I hate that bald spot in the back of my head. To me, that was the secondary thing because it's not gonna really change their appearance if I put hair back here. You know, what I see is the hairline, but it doesn't matter, it's what they want. It's what you want that matters, what your goals are. If you come to me and you're completely bald and say, man, I wanna have the hair I had when I was 18 years old, no one can be will be able to give you that unless you go to have a hair piece. But with transplants, not gonna happen. If I don't tell you that, or if worse, I lead you to believe that that's gonna happen, that's wrong as well. And so, but if I don't know what your goals are, I may make a recommendation that's not appropriate. So I need to have that information too. You see how all these details are very important. So the next step in the medical appointment is the examination, right? You go to your regular physician, hopefully, they will eventually get to you, so let me examine you, let me listen to your heart, and listen to your lungs, and blah, blah, blah. The hair and the scalp are also parts of the body. And if you don't examine the scalp or the hair, or if you're just looking for, or if I'm just looking for hair loss and I forget about everything else, I may miss things, I may miss clues of other types of hair loss. They can be uh, so, uh, soft clues, or they can be hidden under the hair, hidden under the scalp. If I don't look for them, I'm never gonna find them. So. Your provider, your doctor, is supposed to look for these things. They need to look for clues for other types of hair loss. I have to rule out everything else that can be happening to you before I recommend the treatment for you, okay? So, very important. How do you examine? Do, they examine, do we examine your scalp? Looking, of course, looking for things like the hair loss, the miniaturization of hair, if there's any redness, if there's any inflamed areas, if there's any skin cancers on your scalp, um, that need to be taken care of. So all these things need to be examined. Next comes the examination of the hair. Is the hair breaking? Is the hair coming out of the scalp very easily? Uh, do I need to, uh, is there areas that are patchy bald or do those areas look inflamed or do, do you have dandruff? Do you have any swelling? Do you have anything like that? So the health of the hair, the examination of the hair is of paramount importance too. And the doctor should have tools like a uh, uh, magnification camera to examine your scalp or other tools like that to help you, okay? So that's important. I have patients that come to me and say, well, they never touched my hair. They just saw me across the table and made a recommendation for a transplant and I left the office. So that's not right, okay? Examining other areas, what other areas? So if you, if you tell me, well, I have this heart arrhythmia, my heart goes out of rhythm sometimes and I'm on this medication for that. Or my thyroid is, um, you know, I've taken this medication for my thyroid. Or if you don't tell me anything like that, but during our conversation in the first part, I asked you about it, so well, my, sometimes I feel palpitations, my heart sometimes feels funny. I never talked to anybody about that, you know, so I don't know. Or if you tell me I've been, you know, gaining weight or losing weight, my nails are weakening, my hair is falling out, but I never seen anybody for that. If I don't know, and if I don't listen to your heart to see if you have a heart condition, I, I know how to listen to a heart murmur or a heart arrhythmia. I'm a doctor to begin with, right? We went to training for that. I didn't forget all my training in medical school and just know hair loss now. I still know all the other stuff, right? I'm not a specialist, I'm not a cardiologist, but at least the basics I know. So I'll listen to your heart. If you have things that I can associate with a thyroid disease, I'll palpate your thyroid to see if I feel, if you feel it, if it's abnormally large, if it has nodules, if not, if I need to refer you to somebody. These are all part of the medical exam. You can't, ha you can't not have that. If you don't have that, then th the consultation is inappropriate. How do we do all these things with online consultations? Obviously, uh, we've done online consultations forever, much before this whole thing with the COVID came about, but now, Obviously, they're more, they're more common, it's safer, and they're, they're convenient. So, it can be done. I do it all the time. The problem is, uh, we have to be creative. We have to ask more questions. I have to ask more questions to you, so I can see all these things through the camera. 
So obviously I can't touch your hair if I'm seeing it to the camera, but if you get the camera close enough to your hair, maybe you have somebody that can help you. Invariably I have the patient ask for this, his wife or her husband to help hold the camera, get the angle and the, the close-ups that I need to see the scalp. If I'm not sure of an area, I'll offer a consultation here in the office, a second consultation to see them under all the safety protocols. So if I'm not sure, I don't make a recommendation. I send them to see a specialist in their thyroid first, or uh, you know, I ask for a, a scalp biopsy, or I order some blood work. All these things are done so that I can arrive to the right diagnosis, and that should be like it is for everybody. Complementary tests, like I just mentioned. Blood work, sometimes you have to, you, if you don't know, you can check your thyroid levels, all your hormone levels, testosterone level, iron levels for anemia, all sorts of stuff that can help me rule out other things that could be preventing or causing, uh, preventing you from growing your hair or causing you to lose your hair. But if I'm not, if I don't know, if everybody that walks in the office here, I treat as a surgical patient, I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm gonna miss a lot of things. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. That's why we're here with you today. Consulting other specialists. I have patients that have heart trouble, for example, or again, thyroid disease, or lung disease, or kidney disease, or diabetes. They have their own physicians for those things. If I decide, or if we recommend a procedure, say a transplant, and they decide to go through, sometimes I'll ask for a medical clearance. Why? Because I want to make sure that that patient it's safe for me to operate on. Yeah, hair transplants are simple, well, fairly simple surgeries. They're safe surgeries, right? Outpatient, local anesthesia, all that. But still, people have died from hair transplants. It's happened before, and people have had all sorts of problems with it. So I still take all the precautions. Again, I want this to be safe and, and, uh, and for you and for me. So if I need to say, oh, I'll call your cardiologist, I'll talk to them to make sure you're okay to go to this. Maybe you need to go to another stress test or have a treadmill test or whatever because before I can clear you for the surgery because you had your heart attack you know, two years ago. I don't know how your heart is. Some of the medications I may give you during the, the transplant can tax your heart and I don't want you to have a heart attack on my operating table. It's happened before, not with me, obviously, thank God, but it, it's, been hap it's happened to patients doing hair transplant procedures before. So it's not as simple as it looks. And so it is the obligation of us, the physicians, treating you, the patient, to look for your safety, to look for all these things. Then what I do after I have, after and only after I have all that information, I can then safely arrive at a diagnosis or a tentative diagnosis. Sometimes you need to get a biopsy of the scalp for your final diagnosis. Sometimes you need blood work before you that, but that's okay. But you ha I have to have an idea. By the time I arrive at this point in our conversation, our consultation, I have to have an idea of what you have, or at least two or three ideas. Those are called differential diagnosis. And so, in my mind, I'm trying to clear all these things. So I know you don't have a bunch of them, but there might be more than one that I'm thinking about. And people have more than one type of hair loss, very commonly. So I need to start looking for that. And then, once I have a diagnosis, once I kind of know what's happening to you, then I can review your goals and expectations because you don't know, right? So at the end of the consultation, I say, okay, so this is what you have or likely have. If, if, we, if we prove that this is what's going on with your hair, whatever it is, then we can treat you and that's what you can expect from treatment. I can't promise everyone that walks in my room here that they're gonna regain their hair and they're gonna be you know, fine and dandy. I would love to, but reality is not like that. And I'm not serving my patients if I'm dishonest with them. That's how I build trust and reputation. That's why I have patients that have been with me for ever since I started doing this. And now I see uh, their sons and daughters and you know, uh, daughter-in-laws and son-in-laws because it's a trust factor. They know I'm gonna give them the best advice I can regardless of money, regardless of anything else. And so that's what you need to expect from a professional. And that's what I don't see happening right now very much. And it, it pains me to see that because I see people getting hurt all the time by misdiagnosis, procedures that were too aggressive, they never needed, and uh, lack, of, lack of counseling on their hair loss. You have to prevent hair loss. That's as much or more important than any transplant is to save the hair you have so you don't 
continue to lose hair or at least slow down the hair loss. That's very, very important. If you walk away from a hair loss consultation without any kind of discussion on hair loss prevention, then you need to run away from the place and never come back. So finally, we will then create a treatment plan for you, right? So based on what you have, this is what we need to do. Is there medications that you're gonna take? How often you're gonna take them? Why you're gonna take them? Maybe these can produce side effects and what they are and whatever. And then if surgery, transplant or anything like that, how we're gonna do it, why we're gonna do it, where we're going to do it, and what kind of results are you expecting to get or expect you to get. And then once we have arrived at that final uh, recommendation for treatment, then it's your decision to proceed or not to proceed, right? So we don't force anyone, of course, to follow our advice, but most people do. We find that most people do. And again, leaving the consultation with all the information that you need, the prescriptions, the uh, estimate of the cost of the procedures, if any was indicated to you, a follow-up schedule is very important because, you know, surgery needs to be followed up, medications to be followed up, and hair loss has to be followed up. So I don't see a patient one time and never see them again. You know, we see them periodically. One thing that's very important, that's why this slide is uh, in red here. If someone recommends a procedure to you, a hair transplant, a PRP procedure, uh, exosome procedure, anything like that, ask questions, okay? Do not take it at face value. Then you need to start asking questions like, okay, what's the experience of the doctor? If you're not seeing the doctor, which, you know, at this point, I don't think uh, you, you could, you should even be in the same room if you're not seeing the doctor. But anyway, you would ask me, what's my experience in hair restoration, not in liposuction, not in breast augmentation, not in any other things, because that doesn't matter. I may be the greatest guy in liposuction or in breast lifts or in facelifts in the world, it doesn't matter. If I don't have experience in hair restoration surgery, I won't be able to do a good job for you, okay? So that's important. We talked about being the importance of training and board certification. Again, the video link is right here for you to watch that if you want to. What's uh, How many grafts or how many hairs are being recommended to your surgery? And what's the difference between a graft and a hair? Another video that we recorded, what is a hair graft, is right here on this link. Like, check it out, it's gonna give you some more information. And then, how we expect this to work? How many transplants you're supposed to get, or you know, how we're gonna plan for your donor hair usage? All those things, it's not simple. It's not simple. You need to really get in there and, and probe the person that's talking to you, okay? Another question that I never thought a patient would have to ask their doctor that's their their the person that's recommending a surgery for them is who is actually going to be doing the surgery because as unbelievable as it is there are practices out there many of them that the surgery is not performed by the doctor they hire technicians to do it these guys are not legally allowed to do it but they do it anyway so you don't even have a doctor doing the transplants for you if you can believe that so that's another ball of wax. We're gonna talk about that in another video, but if your doctor is not performing it, you should not have the surgery done, okay? No matter how good a technician might be, and I've known some very good ones. I have guys here that, in, that are in my team that have been working with me for 20 years. They are very good at what they do, but I would never let them do a, a whole procedure themselves. They probably, they probably could, but that's not the point. It's my responsibility. It's in my hands. I need to be able to do it for you, okay? And that's what you should expect, nothing less. And so that was the importance of this video. I know it was a little bit incisive. I know it was a little bit even maybe pissed, you know? But because this really is important to me. I have a passion for this field. I care deeply about every patient that I see. And I see more and more, even to this day, patients having bad advice or not adequate advice. and not having good diagnosis done on their hair loss. So to me, this is very personal. And so uh, I hope this was helpful to you. Again, I will leave down below a checklist that you can download and actually take with you to your consultation. We are doing consultations online now. So if you wanna to talk to me, if you have, if you wanna do it, uh, have a second opinion with me, feel free to call us. I'll be happy to see you. We will go through everything that we just talked about and go for every consultation. So. I'm here to help you out and I hope this was informative.
Okay, I'll see you next time. Thank you.